All right, pulling back into my neighborhood. It is 37 degrees outside, and we have 37 miles of range remaining. We started with 149, and we went 64 miles. So that's 120 miles of range in 60 or so miles. Towing nothing. It's just cold outside. What? Welcome to Hoovy's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube. And uh, well, this is my half of a 2022 Ford F-150 Lightning pickup truck that I've owned half of for about six months now. But the other half of the ownership of this, Rob Santori, you've seen him in a few videos before, he called me up and said, hey, I thought something was wrong with this Lightning because the range was getting so, so bad, but it turns out it's because of the cold weather and it is a widespread problem. He's seeing range about half of what he was seeing before, or maybe not quite half. And I thought, well, that's impossible. Yeah, it's cold outside, but it's not that cold. It's in the 30s, and you're not gonna see that big of a range drop. But then I looked it up online, and sure enough, there are a lot of people complaining about the lack of range in the cold with these Ford Lightning pickup trucks. So I decided to borrow the truck again to see for myself, and we're going to do the exact same drive that I did with the trailer. 3,000 pounds of aluminum trailer with a car on it or so to the exact same place, up to the Car Wizards and back, about 64 miles round trip, and see how the car did, and well, holy smokes. But before we go on another lightning voyage, I'd like to thank Ridge Wallet for sponsoring today's video. I've been promoting Ridge Wallets for a few years now, so when I was hanging out with my dad over Thanksgiving and noticed that he had bought one, I assumed it was because of one of my videos, but in reality, he hasn't watched one of my videos in years. He's been a money clip man for as long as I've been alive, and when he saw an ad online for Ridge, he thought it was the perfect design and bought it. I would have bought one for him as a gift, but he beat me to it. Anyway, it's okay that my dad doesn't watch any of my videos because I'm so grateful that you all do. And it's easy to see why so many of my subscribers have switched to the Ridge Wallet. It holds up to 12 cards thanks to its expandable pocket, plus room for cash. There's over 30 colors to choose from, and it has a lifetime warranty. That's why these wallets have over 50,000 five-star reviews, and the Ridge team is so confident you'll like it that they'll let you test drive it for 45 days. If you don't love it, you can send it back for a full refund, plus you get 10% off today by going to the link in the description below and using the coupon code Hoovies. So treat yourself to the wonderful simplicity of a rich wallet. Link below and use the code Hoovies. All right, it's 8 a.m. This truck has been it's sitting cold, cold outside. Yes, it is very, very cold outside. 30 degrees. And this fourth grader, well, she has to get to school and then we're going to head to the Wizards. So far, the truck is showing. Showing. Oh, it has to go through its fancy presentation here. It is currently showing 149 miles of range, even though it is three quarters full because it has adjusted for winter time and what the average driving range of this truck is, which is uh, not very good right now, but we'll see. Pulling up to my daughter's school. Bye, honey. Have a good day at school. I love you. Thank you. She warms up a little bit. It's slow in the morning. Well, that school run was only two miles. I think we started with 149, we're at 143. So. Seven miles of range to go two miles. Unloaded, there's no trailer back there. It's just cold outside and we're driving to school. All right, we are 10 miles into this trip now and we have used 21 miles of range. Here we go again. <laughs> wow, that's not quite as bad as towing a light load, but that's still really, really bad. And one thing I've noticed now that it's cold and I'm driving this truck, the heated steering wheel is very, very nice, except for this spot right here. It's it's hot lava. I, I don't know why that piece gets superheated everywhere else. It's it's normal, but this one, gosh. All right, pulling into the car wizards now. And our range is now showing 98 miles. We started this with 149 miles, so we used 50 miles of range to go 32 miles total. That's not as bad as towing, but it's still really, really bad. I have some things I need to do in here, and then we'll head back. It'll probably be a little better because it's getting warmer outside, and also the battery has warmed up as well, so we'll see. Oh boy, was I wrong. So 
What I didn't realize when I was driving up here is the massive tailwind that I had. It's a little windy in Kansas here in this time of year, and it's probably 15, 20 miles per hour pushing me up to the Car Wizards, and now I am battling against it. You see how the antenna is folded back pretty far, going 75 miles per hour, and now to go 15 miles, we're now at 59 miles of range, so have we used 40 miles of range to go 16 miles? Am I computing that right? Uh, now we're getting back into trailer towing territory. Yikes. All right, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> I still have another uh, 12, 13 miles to go and I already got the range low warning, 48 miles of range remaining. Now the computer's adjusted a little bit, but in the summer, towing a light load, I did the exact same trip and it didn't come on this low range warning until I was pulling into my neighborhood. <laughs> we still have 10 plus miles to go. I'm sounding like a broken record here, but this is so stupid. All right, pulling back into my neighborhood. It is 37 degrees outside, and we have 37 miles of range remaining. We started with 149, and we went 64 miles. So that's 120 miles of range in 60 or so miles. Towing nothing. It's just cold outside. What? So to be fair, the lightning was set up to fail because I just let it sit outside in the cold, not plugged in, so the batteries were dead cold when we started. That's why the range the first two miles was so, so bad. And Ford does have some tips to help you with battery range, but some of them, you'll see, they are quite funny. So here's from Ford itself on an Inside EV article where it's giving you the best tips to get the most range out of your Ford in the winter. And the first one, obviously, is parking your car in the garage whenever possible. Obviously, it's going to be warmer in the garage and keeping it plugged in when you parked. That keeps the battery warm, keeps it fully charged, all that stuff runs. And then number three is if you plan a longer commute, precondition your vehicle using departure times to warm up the battery. So you can go in your Ford app and say, I'm gonna be driving this car in 20 minutes, warm it up, that way the battery is good to go and not driving off cold like what I did. All good advice. Now number four and five though on their tips are very funny. The first one, if equipped, use the heated seats and steering wheel as primary heat to reduce energy consumed by HVAC. So don't use your heater. <laughs> don't use your heater in the winter. Use the heated seats because it consumes less energy. Okay, and then when charging, this is the next one, turn off the heater if possible or lower the temperature enough to remain comfortable. So when you're waiting to charge your car, be as cold as you possibly can so it charges quicker. <laughs> really? Number six, if your F-150 Lightning is covered in snow, brush it all off and then keep your driving speeds low. Once again, go way under the speed limit like with towing and you'll get much better range. Uh, and then number eight, ensure your tires at proper pressure. Well, of course. So that is the eight tips, uh, three of them pretty darn silly. Another lightning story making the rounds describes a man plugging in his truck at an Electrify America station and it completely bricks. Dead screens has to be towed off, which actually tracks with us because every time Rob has tried to plug in his truck at an Electrify America, it gives an error code. It didn't brick the truck, thankfully. <laughs> so here's the problem with this. Rob, the other half of ownership on this, uh, he drives around all day for work. He's a liquor rep, stops in dozens of liquor stores over the course of a week. So he is barely keeping up when it comes to charging at home and the range of this truck in winter, and it is stressing him out. So he's not sure if he wants to keep this thing anymore. And at some point, Ford is probably going to fix this and extend the range of these trucks dramatically, which will probably make these plummet in value, kind of like the early Teslas or a lot of other early cars where they fix the bugs. So we're thinking it may be time to dump this thing. I also have an invitation from my friends at Eddie Chevrolet Cadillac, which actually I used to work at that store over 15 years ago under a different owner. And nowadays they're making it into a crazy destination store. What they have in their showroom, I actually was in there buying a car recently that I haven't revealed yet on the channel, was totally insane. And it is a Chevy store that recently transacted a McLaren Senna. 
Yes, a McLaren Senna. They're getting a Huracan STO and an Aventador Ultima in as well. So this is not your typical Chevy store. And they have a new Hummer EV that they invited me out to drive and experience. And I've never driven one before, so I definitely wanted to accept the invitation because I think Hummer is doing everything right that Ford isn't when it comes to electric pickup trucks. So that's where we're going to go today. They're also going to give me a bid to buy this thing, whether I trade it in or they buy it outright to see, well, if we want to get out of this thing. But I can't go just yet because this thing doesn't have enough range to get there and back. So I have to wait an hour or two for this thing to charge a little bit in the garage before we go. So I'll be inside. Just ridiculous. Unfortunately, that Kansas wind has picked up more as the day has gone by, so I'm sitting inside of the Hummer EV. I pulled up to the Chevrolet dealership, dropping off the Lightning for an appraisal, and they are too kind to let me borrow this thing to see what I think, and it is an edition one. And the first impression is this thing is an absolute work of art, but the specs, first of all, 350 miles of range, zero to 60, about three seconds. You all know about the crazy crab walk, which I can't wait to try. The battery capacity on this thing, get this, it's 212 kilowatt hours because this thing is huge. It's 9,000 pounds, very much like the old Hummer in comparison to the Lightning, 98 kilowatt hour battery because it is the smaller battery. So literally double, which if you're going to a charging station to fill this thing up, it's reported that the Hummer EV can cost over $100 to fill up its charge, which is more than say an old Hummer H2, which is absolutely hilarious but in my opinion Hummer has sort of leaned into these things being quite absurd and fun and you just look at it it's it's like a video game and the old Hummers they would knock the interiors for the quality and fit and finish but I mean look at the vents in this thing look at the dashboard look at the buttons in the infotainment screen it's just absolutely gorgeous the roof here I mean, it's surprising that the base MSRP of one of these is around $100,000. They sell in the secondary market for double that, and it's easy to see why, because this thing looks like a really premium, fancy, fancy thing. And the performance is supposedly unreal. Well, just pulling out of the parking lot, you can tell the four-wheel steering is helping things out a lot. You look at it in the mirror, and it looks... <laughs> oh, that is so cool. But it's making a noise. I think somebody has turned on the sound. <laughs> it makes some kind of sound between a spaceship and a V8. I wonder if that can be adjusted, but it's, it's making weird engine noises through the speakers as you accelerate. All right, now we can really punch it here. Gee, many Christmas. This thing is fast. Holy moly. And it's 9,000 pounds that it can do that. A zero to 60 in three seconds. It's astounding. Finally at the highway on-ramp. Here we go. Okay, slow down. Whoa, whoa. This feels 100 years into the future. I had no idea how amazing these things were. I thought, oh my God, it's another truck that's marked up double its MSRP. That's so stupid, but Hummer is way, way underpricing these things. Looks like it has Super Cruise as well. I mean, this truck, it is a total home run. And if this is the platform that the future Chevy trucks and GMC trucks is based on, a toned down, less blinged out, cheaper version of this, Ford Lightning, it doesn't stand a chance. Well, this is a life-changing experience. <laughs> I'm gonna go home in the driveway, crab walk this thing, and then talk about why Hummer did such a great job on the electric pickup truck, and Ford should probably take some notes with this thing. And look at this. Even the font's cool. All right, back in my driveway, and we are crab walking here. We have this fancy knob that changes the modes here. <laughs> this is, I mean, this is like a video game. It's, it's nuts. All right, we'll put it in off-road, and I think we hit this button for four-wheel steering. Do we hold it down? There it is. Crab walk engaged. Okay. <laughs> and here we go. <laughs> this, is, this is so goofy. 
but so amazing. I love everything about this. Wow. So the Hummer EV, it writes a big historical wrong, in my opinion, when it comes to this brand written off as a useless, excessive gas guzzler. In the Great Recession, it went away, but now it's back as an electric vehicle. But it's still just as ridiculous and excessive and impractical, but so, so cool. Electric vehicles, they should be a big flex right now, especially when it comes to trucks, in my opinion. There's no way an electric vehicle is going to replace a pickup truck in the practicality when it comes to towing and doing normal truck stuff anytime soon, so you might as well make it as fun and goofy and crazy as possible and market it as such. And that's what the Hummer EV is. The Ford Lightning, it seems like they're out to save the world with the thing, at least in the marketing. Yes, it's a viable replacement to a Ford F-150, but you have so many limitations. This truck is not looking to replace any GMC or Chevrolet pickup truck at the moment. It's basically going after exotic cars that people want to flex in like a Lamborghini Urus. I'm trying to think of something to be comparable to, but it's like a Lamborghini or a Ferrari pull up to the club, go crazy in something like this. A Maybach would be another great example, but you can go off road. You can use it as a daily driver around town, but they lean into the craziness with these things. And I guess that's why I like it so, so much more than the Ford Lightning, plus the range 350 miles. So the next trucks that are going to come from this platform, the Chevrolet and the GMC, a much lighter, much simpler version at a much lower price, is going to have starting 400 miles in range and start for around 40, 50 grand. We don't know the exact specifics yet, but having an electric platform for a truck rather than adapting an existing one is probably the reason why it's doing so much better than say a Ford F-150 Lightning when it comes to range and performance in adverse conditions. We'll see when the new ones come out, but already it seems like it's cheaper, it's going to have a lot more range, and if the quality is even half of what this Hummer EV is, well, it's a brick house in comparison to a straw house with the Ford F-150 Lightning. And speaking of, I guess I have to take this thing back now and see what they have to say as far as a bid on that thing, because Rob really does want out of it. All right, back down to earth in this Ford Lightning, which is a very advanced car, but it feels like a dinosaur compared to that Hummer. Man, what an amazing thing. And a big thank you to Eddie Chevrolet Cadillac for that experience. Their inventory, like I said earlier, is just unbelievable. So be sure to check them out. I'll put a link in the description below just as a thank you. But they were also very generous in how hard they worked to get a good trade value on this truck. The first couple places they called were around MSRP, which isn't bad. But then they got one uh, that wants to pay well over, which is what these things are selling for, well over MSRP, at least for now, which I'm talking to Rob and it seems like we are going to take it. So this may be the end when it comes to Ford Lightning videos, but I've pretty much done everything that I've wanted to when it comes to YouTube videos with it that wouldn't involve like harming it and hurting the value. And Rob, who planned to daily drive this, uh, doesn't really want to do it anymore. So we'll see what happens, but thank you so much for watching.